Hi, it's Fern again, back, lessons of the week. It's getting a little chilly over here in New Jersey. Um, this week I want to talk a little bit about adding a new dog to your existing household family pack. Um, a lot of people uh, make the misconception, or have the misconception, that if you have an existing dog, to fix problems with your existing dog, you should get another dog. Because maybe he's just lonely, maybe he just needs someone to do, maybe he needs companionship, maybe just having another dog to interact with him will make all the behavior problems that he has kind of go away. This is very common, but this is a big mistake. Because, <laughs> think about it, uh, it I'm adding another unknown entity into an already less than perfect situation, you're really rolling the dice there quite a bit. And having two dogs is much more difficult than twice as hard. Um, there's a lot more things come into play. So I never recommend getting another dog until your existing dog or dogs are really perfect. They're not perfect, but you know, they're in good shape, they're well behaved, they've got some training under their belt. Um, you do not want to add another dog to an already unstable household or dog. That will only make problems worse. Yes, they will have companionship, but the behavior problems are not going to go away. They're still going to be there. If they have anxiety, yes, having another dog may alleviate that slightly, but the another dog is not going to make a magic, it's like a magic wand and everything's, that anxiety is going to go away. Anxiety is not something you can turn on and off like a light switch. Um, it's something you have to work toward fixing. It's like if you're an anxious person, you can't just say, okay, here, your situation changed. You should be less anxious. No, it doesn't work that way. It takes some time. It takes conscious effort and doing proactive things to get rid of that anxiety. So stuff like with, with dogs, if you, get an, if you have a dog with anxiety, another dog may help, maybe a little temporarily, maybe a little bit long term, but it's not going to change anything. You really have to work to actively change the anxiety at its source, which is with the existing dog. Uh, and then you add another dog to, a, to the household and that changes your world quite drastically. Um, you know, walking two, three dogs is much harder than walking one or two. You know, anytime you add more dogs, it becomes a lot more tricky, specifically if you're dealing with dogs with any kind of issues like reactivity and stuff. To try to walk them, specifically if they're large, whew, you're, gonna, you're, you're making a lot more work for yourself. And, 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 and it, if it doesn't work out, then you're, you're really in trouble because now you've got multiple dogs with behavior problems. Now I've got to find them homes if, if you, you, know, you can't take care of them. Uh, so it's never, ever, ever a good idea to bring another dog into your home until your existing pack is really running well. Until you've got, you know, you've done some training with them, they, they have no major issues, that's when you want to add another dog to the house. And when you do so, you want to try to pick the right mix, the right match for the house. You know, so what typically happens is people just fall for a soft story or something, say, oh, this dog is going to be put down or... Um, you know, it just lost its home or something, I'm just going to take it in without any thought of, is this the right fit for my family, pack, household, and my existing dog or dogs that are already there in the house. So you really have to find the right match. And what you look for is, whatever dog you have initially, um, you want to try to pick a dog with maybe slightly less energy than your existing one. If you pick a dog with higher energy, that can cause a lot of trouble with your existing dog because he's not, he's not really ready for that energy <laughs> and may, may not really like it. So you can have more conflict that way. So try to pick a dog with slightly under energy than the one you have. Um, uh, typically, opposite sex will, will do better. So if you have a male dog, get a female dog, female dog. Not always, you know, doesn't always the case. You can definitely have a house full of male dogs or female dogs and be fine. Just if I was gonna pick, I would, I would without looking at anything else, I would, I would go opposite sex, but you know, you want to meet the other dog first. You want to, I would let them, and they're, you're the two dogs interact outside of the house and then maybe in the house once or twice. I want to know if they're really going to get along. I mean, no matter what, there's going to be an adjustment period, but you want to, you want to set everything up to succeed. So you want to let them get to know, get to know each other and, and, you know, kind of establish, you know, how they, their relationship and kind of how they feel. You want to get a good window into the world of what, what your world's going to be like with them. Um, like I said, there is an adjustment period, but still, you want to know right away if there's going to be an initial conflict. So that's what I want you to think about, you know, when, like, because uh, the holidays are coming up. 
a lot of people make a bad decision to uh, to get a daughter on the holidays because that's going to be an emotional decision or worse a gift the worst gift is a puppy or a dog to someone else uh, you know that's something that the, the person who's going to take care of the dog has to be actively and intimately involved in that process um, but really think hard before adding a, an additional dog to your household and make sure you're, you're bringing them into a nice stable happy environment so that you're really ensuring that you guys will all be together forever. Um, so that's it for that. The last thing I want to talk about briefly is Halloween is on Monday. So uh, there's a lot of candy going around there and we got to be careful with our dogs. You got to keep that candy up and away out of reach from all these pooches because as you probably know chocolate is very toxic to dogs specifically dark chocolate or baker's chocolate. Um, but all chocolate in general can kill the dog. I do know of clients of mine who their dogs have died after ingesting a piece of chocolate. So please, 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 let's be safe on Halloween and make sure all that candy is out of reach. Specifically, if you have kids, you gotta, you gotta supervise like crazy. I don't want those dogs uh, getting any of that chocolate um, and raisins as well. So raisinettes, that's a double, <laughs> a double dose of danger. Okay, so happy Halloween. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, this week, and I will see you again next week. All right, take care. Oh, and I think I have a new slogan that one of my students and uh, clients has uh, graciously brought to my attention. I usually say uh, make uh, make sure you remember that every day with your dog is a good day. But my new slogan, are you ready? Is make every day a great day with your dog. So make it. It's up to you to do that. Every day is available to you to have a great day with your dog, but it's up to you to make it that way. So I want you to take those proactive steps. So go make every day with your dog a great day. All right, take care. I'll see you next time.